Shalo! I hope you're all having an awesome day. And I hope that day is about to get even better. And that's because you've just landed on the latest episode of the Back to the Sea Society's Shell and Tell series. My name is Joe, and today I'm going to be introducing you to a pretty cool marine animal. So before I tell you just who this animal is, let's see if you have any ideas. So I'll give you a few hints to help you figure it out. This is a little animal with a big name. And this is an animal that could be found in the touch tank hut last year. And one more hint, if you've ever spent time on the waterfront, on beaches, or on docks here in Atlantic Canada, you might have seen this animal before. Have you figured it out? Okay, I'll tell you. This animal is the periwinkle! Oh my gosh. I love that name so much. It is so fun to say. If you're at home, give it a try right now and say periwinkle. Oh my gosh, I think I just got goosebumps. So, the picture that you can see beside me is the common periwinkle. And this guy is called common for a reason. Now, if you remember, I said you can find them on beaches and docks here in Atlantic Canada. And you can find them in pretty large numbers. It's not uncommon to see a whole bunch of periwinkles stuck to a rock together. If you ever have the chance to see a periwinkle shell up close, you'll see that it's got this amazing pattern of stripes. Typically, they are dark brown in nature. But erosion, and that is the wind and the waves chipping away at the shell over time, can make them a sort of lighter brown color. So why do these periwinkle like to spend so much time on rocks down near the beach? Well, that's because this is where you can find their favorite food, which is algae. So algae is that green stuff that grows on rocks, and to a periwinkle, that is like a five-course buffet. They cannot get enough of the stuff. They have a special tongue called a radula that's a long tube covered in little teeth. They use this radula to scrape and suck the algae off rocks until they are full and content. So although these guys are pretty small, only a couple centimeters in length, a team of them working together can clear a rock like it is nobody's business. In fact, constant hitting with the radula against a rock can erode and chip away a rock over time. So these guys are pretty small, but they're very powerful. So periwinkles, being a type of snail, have their homes, their shells, right on their back, and it grows with them all their life. Wow, I wish I could just carry my home with me and take a nap anywhere as I wanted. But when the periwinkle eventually dies, he will leave his shell behind. And this is good for other animals like the hermit crab. If you saw episode four of Shell and Tell, you'll know that hermit crabs love to make homes out of shells left behind by other animals, just like the periwinkle. This is why if you see a periwinkle shell on the beach, it's a good idea to take a peek at it, but leave it there. That might be a hermit crab's future home. So if you're ever down by the beach and you see a periwinkle hanging out on a rock, it might not look like it's doing a whole lot, but that is not always the case. You see, a periwinkle can form a special type of mucus that allows it to stick to a rock. It creates a seal all around the outer lip of the shell, and it really suctions right to the surface of that rock. This is really good for the periwinkle because it makes it quite that tough little snail. You see, in this state, the periwinkle can survive being hit by really strong waves or big gusts of wind. It can even stay stuck like that in really hot temperatures or really cold temperatures. And it can retain moisture in its gills, allowing it to stick like this for days without any food or water. So yeah, the periwinkle is a pretty cool little guy. If you do happen to see a periwinkle stuck to a rock like this, it's a good idea to take a peek and observe its shell, but don't touch or try to pick up the periwinkle. If you do, that suction to the rock could become unstuck, and then the periwinkle could get swept out to the ocean away from all its periwinkle friends. So while it's always a good idea to observe and be curious about the things we see on the beach, it's better not to touch them and to leave them where they are. So one last fact about the periwinkle before I've got to head out. 
but it turns out this little guy is quite the frequent flyer. That is to say, he has traveled a long way to be here. You see, scientists think that the periwinkle is not native to North America, but rather comes from across the Atlantic Ocean on the west coasts of Europe. How did the periwinkle get all the way across the ocean, you ask? Well, I'll give you a hint. He did not fly on a plane. What we think happened is that back hundreds of years ago, when boats were coming from Europe to North America, they would have had to fill up their ballast tanks with water. So ballast water is used by a boat to help keep it steady on the rocky ocean. So a boat would suck up all this ballast water and maybe some species like the periwinkle before it left port. Then when it arrived here in Canada, it would dump all that water out. And any periwinkles or other animals that would be living in this water would all of a sudden find themselves in a completely different home. So a lot of native species that lived here in Canada would love to eat algae, just like the periwinkle. So this can be a little bit tricky, now you've got a whole new animal who also wants to eat the same food source as these guys. So while the periwinkle is a pretty cute little animal, he's also a bit of a troublemaker for lots of animals that live here. I hope you all enjoyed learning about the periwinkle today. I invite you to check out our website, backtothesea.org, to learn all sorts of other exciting things. And if your parents are looking for fun activities to do with you at home, they can check out our online store where we've got coloring pages, paper puppets, and all sorts of fun stuff. Thank you for supporting our work, and we will see you next time on Shell and Tell. See you later!